Okay, uh, welcome back to the Getting to Know You uh, videos. Um, there's been a huge hiatus, obviously. I recorded a lot of these back in May, and then I said, coming up next, we have a bunch of videos, and then I got super busy, and then everybody started asking, hey, when are these other videos coming? And I finally decided to uh, do them. So thanks everybody who's been watching, and thanks for the feedback, it's been really great. Um, so last time we left off, we had finished talking about a lot. We talked about the introduction to Git, uh, we talked about the idea of branching, we talked about the idea of pushing uh, and pulling distributed repositories and stuff like that. And really, it all leads up to this, uh, which is a very important feature, um, because this is where things get really interesting in terms of workflow, because now you can you have a kind of set way to kind of work with people, and that's the idea of pull requests. Um, so this is going to be a really nice kind of culmination of all that, and because of that, make sure you watch the other videos before you get to this, or else a lot of this won't make sense. Uh, maybe just kind of refresh your memory about branching, more importantly, pull requests, uh, not pull requests, sorry, pull, uh, git fetch and git pull, and git push. Um, ma uh, make sure you kind of understand those. Uh, so we'll get, we'll get started with that. Okay, so um, let's, let's do this here. Last time we left off, um, we had talked about, uh, you know, these different repositories we had, and we were working on this repository called My First Piece of Software. And where we left off is that we had a couple of local branches. So we had a blue feature branch, a green feature branch, uh, a master branch, and a red feature branch. Um, we had discussed uh, pushing those elements to GitHub. Um, we talked about the idea how when you do a git push, uh, it only pushes and match uh, for all the changes for matching branches. And if you don't have matching branch, you can explicitly push a branch up to your GitHub repository. We also talked about the idea of um, git fetch and git pull. And the idea how it kind of gets into this temporary area, this kind of remote tracking branches. And then you kind of merge from those to get into your branches here. Uh, and then before that even, actually, we talked about the idea of merging. We talked about how um, you can kind of switch context to say like the green feature, make a bunch of changes, and when you've done that, you can merge those changes back in the master by doing a get checkout get 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 checkout master, and then after that you do a merge green feature, and that would get into here, right? Okay, so if you understand all that, you're pretty much ready for pull requests. So we talked about merging branches on your local box, and that's all well and good. Um, you know, you can work away and do a bunch of local branches, and maybe branches you don't even want people to see, and that's why you wouldn't push them to GitHub, right? So some branches, uh, you just want to do some local work, and then you merge them in. But what happens if you're in a collaborative environment, uh, say you're working on an open source project, or say you're just working in a company, or you're working with a couple other people, and you don't want to just kind of blindly uh, merge stuff, right? You don't want to just uh, create a bunch of code and then say, oh yeah, I'm just going to merge it and not let anybody know, right? What if you want actual, actual people to know, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if that we could push our branches up to GitHub and do the merging up there, right? And that seems like a simple enough concept, right? Because we talked about how, you know, the local repository and the GitHub repository, are they're both just Git repositories. So you should be able to do everything you can do on a local repository as you can on a Git repository, right? You should be able to do mer uh, branching, merging, all this kind of stuff like that, right? But there's obviously one big problem. The big problem being is that on our local Git repository, we have access to the we have access to the command line interface, right? We have access to the all these Git commands here. On GitHub. We don't. We, we don't have access to the Git repository sitting on there. We can't actually log in there and do, you know, Git branch or Git merge and all that stuff like that. We can't actually do that, right? So that that's one of the problems, right? We we can't actually go onto GitHub and do this merge by logging in and doing a Git merge or whatever. Right? We don't have, actually have that feature, right? Well, luckily, uh, GitHub actually provides a mechanism to do this. GitHub actually has created a web interface, right? Uh, on top of this Git repository that allows you to do this merge, right? So they actually created a little button that allows you to do this little merge, which is really nice. And the really nice thing about that is because it's through the web interface, you can like get other people to do it. You can get other collaborators to actually do this merge for you, right? And what's the advantage of that? Well, maybe you don't want to, again, blindly merge your branch, say here, from the green feature to the master. Perhaps before you do that actual merge, you want to let other people know. You say, hey, look, I've got all this code and I want to merge it into master, but can you guys look it over? Can you do a little code review? Can you comment on anything that, I, uh, that I've done here? And maybe there's some changes I want to make before I actually do this merge. Or maybe 
you want other people to merge because maybe there's there's gatekeepers, right? Maybe the master branch is your supervisor or your boss or the person who owns the project or whoever, and they're the kind of gatekeepers that don't just let anybody merge, right? You just so you push these branches up to GitHub and then you can just merge it, whatever. Like you maybe have these administrators and only they can merge it. So wouldn't it be nice that you could tell them, hey, can you look at this code in my green feature? Can you look at this diff? Uh, anything I've committed and can if you're happy with it can you merge it and then wouldn't it be nice if they could comment and say hey yeah that looks all good and I'll merge it for you okay like, wouldn't it be nice if you had this full kind of interaction and it all happening on github right because we use github so much already we use the github interface wouldn't it be nice if we could also do like these code reviews and all this merging kind of collaborative work on github well the brilliant thing is is that github allows you to do all this and all within the github web interface, which is really brilliant. And this is really the basis for pull requests. It's the idea that you would push a branch up to GitHub and then let somebody else know, hey, can you look at this branch and can you take a look at the diffs between this branch and the master branch? And if you're happy with it, can you say it looks good and actually do the merge for me? This is the idea of pull requests. Okay, so let's actually see this in action. Okay, so just like this diagram here, okay, um, last time we left off, we did have all these local branches sitting on our um, box, and then we had the green feature and the master branch sitting on GitHub. Now, um, let's see here. Okay, so just so we're all on the same page, because you guys might have done a couple commits on your stuff, or I might have done a couple commits on stuff, let's just make sure everything is up to date. So let's just do a git fetch from GitHub, okay? And let's merge uh, our branches. So right now I'm sitting on the master branch. So let's just merge the master. Okay. And then let's do the same thing for the green feature because that's what we're going to be working on. So git merge origin green feature. Okay. So it looks like everything's up to date, which is really nice. Okay. I have a project file in here, um, but I'll ignore that for now. So git checkout master. Okay, let's check in here. Okay, so we're all up to date and we're all good to go. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here is simulating exactly what I talked about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to update the green feature and then I'm going to push that green feature up to GitHub. So rather than merging it on my local, um, on my local box, sorry, ignore these arrows, I'm just looping through the video here. So rather than me, again, doing the merge on my local box, I'm going to not do the merge here. Leave master alone. I'm going to push green feature up to GitHub. And then we're going to do the merge on GitHub up here through a pull request. Okay. So this merge won't actually happen on this side. We're going to push it up to GitHub and do the merge up here. Okay. So let's, um, let's, let's do this. Let's do one more thing, actually. Let's bring green feature up to date with master, okay, just in case. So let's check out the green feature and let's merge uh, the master branch, okay? Uh, looks like there's a conflict, automatic merge failed, fixed conflict, okay. So let me just fix this up here. Um, if I do a git status, you'll see that, uh, what was it? The readme.txt right here, both modified readme.txt has some issues. So I'm just going to bring up that file. So readme.txt and you'll see actually how easy it is to resolve conflict. So if I just bring up this file, you'll see it has these uh, kind of conflict marks whichever one I want to keep. So uh, this is the master branch. This is what the current branch I'm sitting in. So I'm going to keep what's in the master branch. All I do is save it. So all I have to do is edit the file really. And then next thing you do is get status. It should be, um, should be good to go actually. So fix conflict and then commit the result. So git commit fixed conflict and merged. All 
Okay. Done and done. Okay. 